Hey, what's up, guys? Node Investor here. 7,000 Bitcoin. Where's the uh, champagne? I don't hear any corks popping. What's happening? Gotta love this action here. Man, the bears are just getting smoked, wrecked. You know, this, this massive rally off the low has caught many people by surprise. Even the diehard bulls has been caught by surprise with the strength the ferocity of this oops, of this rally that we've seen here, the bullishness, the king Bitcoin just being the only place to be really since the month of April. But that's changing now. And uh, I've been slowly popping back into the alts here. I was a little bit early and I generally am. I was probably about a day, day early or so, a day and a half early. Um, but I started scaling out of all uh, BTC into the alts, um, you know, yesterday, the day before. Started with ETH, picked up some Ripple, picked up some Stellar yesterday, some Neo, Cardano today, and, um, you know, just moving out of Bitcoin here. My rationale has been the altcoins would bottom out before Bitcoin topped. I've been telling that to the Slack channel i've been saying that on the private live streams um and we did a private live stream yesterday talking about just um specifically how to trade these altcoin reversals and many of those names have already moved past those points have more than confirmed um so good stuff now that rationale continues to be my thesis i expect the altcoins would bottom before bitcoin tops and we're seeing that here today now when i say when bitcoin tops you know, I don't necessarily mean like a long-term top. Don't don't misunderstand me. What I mean by that is until we see the next pause, right? Something like this, right? The next pause. And the next pause could take many shapes. It could be a pause like this. It could be a pullback, a retracement. I don't say top in the sense of, you know, it's going to come straight back down to 4K, 3K. Uh, that's certainly not my uh, expectation here. The bull is strong. Is this a confirmed bull market? Looks like it. I'm not going to argue with that. Uh, I've been in since the lows, as many of you guys know. Those of you that have been following, I was buying the blood back here during the November, December dip. I honestly wish it would have stayed here at the lows a little bit longer because my plan was to uh, con you know, continue to accumulate over the next six months, eight months, you know, this sub 6K level. Um, I was kind of surprised at just how quickly it just blew out of range. And here we are, 7,000. I mean, that's incredible when you think about that. It wasn't even two months ago. Not even two months ago. We were in the three Ks. <laughs> and we were talking about, oh, is 4K going to hold? What's going to happen at 4K? It's going to come back down. What you don't hear anymore is all those bears calling for 1,200 anymore. Thank goodness. But hey. We're not going to argue, not going to poke fun. This is good action. It feels nice to be in a bull market again, to be in a bull trend, to see the altcoins, you know, doing what they do. They get pulled back when Bitcoin has these rallies and here we are breaking higher. BTC hitting $7,000 on Coinbase today. And just a very amazing rally, to be honest. I mean, just the dips are being bought out. Um, you know, you have these scares, these panics to the downside, which are very short lived. And it's just kind of an opportunity for people to buy back in. And you just see this here yesterday. I was watching this late last night. There was uh, some good discussion going on in the chat room. And it looked like I was thinking that's probably it. It's getting parabolic. It's looking climactic here. I'm thinking we're probably done around 68, 6900. I saw 6900 get hit and then it like quickly pulled right back to the 67s. And I'm thinking, all right, maybe that was it. You know, the volume is starting to spike. You're seeing that parabolic move. I thought maybe that's it. But here we are, 7K. Um, personally, I think we're close from a time perspective, right? Uh, I don't know what price. I mean, it could be anybody's guess at that point. But, you know, in this next window, this next day or two, couple days, um, at most, like maybe three or four days, I think we'll see the, the reversal or the pause, right? Um, now, what happens there? Is it a big drop? Is it just a flat sideways choppy action? Um, I think if it's going to be a sideways choppy action, oh man, there's going to be some great alt trades to be had in that scenario. But uh, from a timing perspective, I think we're close. 
from a price perspective, well, heck, it's anybody's guess. You can get maybe a, a parabolic squeeze, a short, a big volume spike to the top that pulls back, right? That's usually the way it plays out. Um, and so we'll see when that happens. But this is kind of my window. I think we'll see that finally have a couple red candles there, uh, and then we'll go from there. But I'm not bearish on Bitcoin by any means. Um, in fact, I'm not looking to short a top or anything. What I'm doing is I'm taking profits into this top, and I've been scaling into the altcoins, which we will deep dive here. Uh, some of these setups that I'm looking at, some of the names that I'm looking at, things that are running. Um, and and my, my thought was, you know, at some point, like an extra 10% in the Bitcoin price action is not going to be worth it if I miss a 20, 40% move off the lows in the alts, right? And so, I mean, let's kind of think that through. Let's say Bitcoin moves from 7,000 to 8,000, right? Which would be amazing. And I'm not, I wouldn't hate that. But let's say it does that. If it goes from 8,000 to 8, uh, 7,000 to 8,000, right? That's a 15% move from where we're at. 15% for an altcoin versus Bitcoin, that's easy. I mean, you saw a basic attention token the other day up 25%. You saw, um, you know, just here today, right? ETH and NEO and some of these other names um, popping. And look at these big bearish reversal candles. I mean, from the exact low to now, it's up 11%, right? And so that's my thought process is I'm okay leaving a little on the table with BTC if it continues higher because I'm going to make that up on the other end with alt outperforming Bitcoin. So by definition, I'll have more net Bitcoin, right? That's the game. And run the alts back up a little bit on a bounce. I'm not sure if they're going to like fully retrace and take off in their own bear bull market, but I'm just looking for bounce trades and then I'll cycle back into Bitcoin and just that's the game. Uh, that's the game I'm playing right now. And so we'll see how that goes. Uh, right now, I'm probably about you know, less than 50% Bitcoin now as I've been uh, cycling back in for these alts. And these will probably just be quicker trades, looking for a little bit of a swing to the other side, see how they go. And then if it looks like the alts are really going to get going, then uh, then I'll get a lot more aggressive. And, you know, and there's been times where I sometimes will go 100% alts, 0% Bitcoin. It just depends on the environment. Right now, uh, it behooves you to hold a little BTC just because it's been the place to be. Uh, so... Yeah, good stuff. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are um, enjoying this bullishness here. We've got some big events coming up in the crypto space. You have, you know, the Magic Crypto Coin Conference, and you've got Consensus, which, let's be honest, Consensus is generally overrated. I'm not going to go this year. Um, last year was overcrowded, such a pain. Uh, and mostly, I mean, I go just to enjoy the conversation with people there. There's some good discussions, some good panelists, no doubt. Uh, but it's not like there's anything you're missing that you can't see online if you just wanted to watch the discussions. Uh, certainly meeting people is always fun. But uh, it was just a lot of crowd, a lot of fighting people, a lot of just getting pitched crappy ICO projects and people just wanted me to invest in their stuff. And uh, last year was like peak ICO. But anyway, I won't be there. If you are, I hope you enjoy it. Good stuff. Um, let's look at the other charts here. So we'll go to BTC here real quick and we'll take care of that guy and then we will deep dive some of these alts because that's really where I'm getting a little bit more excited is in the altcoin names. Um, so looking at BTC here before we do real quick, uh, we'll look at the coin market cap in a minute and then we'll look at the alert system. And I'm going to be using this here today to kind of just quickly walk through uh, some of the alerts, how I use them, the automated watch lists. Um, and all that good stuff. And of course, for those of you that are familiar with my training courses, um, there is a new one, relatively new one. It's only been out for a couple of months. I will continue to add to these. Uh, but if you're serious about trading and, and technical analysis and all that stuff, I would highly recommend you go check this out. And so as a subscriber to the Node Insiders, you have access to that. So just wanted to let you guys know. And we do private live streams and all that good stuff. Uh, if you're curious about how those go they're all different and they're very casual in the description notes for this live stream that i'm doing right now i have a link to the live stream i did yesterday for the private group and in that live stream we talked about how to look at reversals how to trade them different ways to approach it a few names that i was looking at cardano neo were on the list we were looking at bat engine uh, a whole bunch of names right so 
go check that out. It's a long, it's a little bit of a long live stream, but if you're curious to know, you know, how it goes, that's how it is. It's very casual. I answer all the questions, um, and we go from there. So, anybody that subscribes to this certainly will get an invite to the Slack group and have access to all that good stuff. So, all right, uh, let's look at BTC. We'll look at some key price levels here, and then we will hop over to the alts and get to it. So, looking at BTC, of course. There's a couple of things that I'm looking at from a support level, right? I'm going to clear this guy out, and I'll clear this box out. Uh, from a support level, and I'm using the Coinbase exchange right here. Um, I've been watching these moving average pairs, and I've been talking about them as levels of support. As long as prices stay above that, that's really the name of the game. Now, they're extended above that here, so it's going to get a little trickier because... I mean, from current price up to where we're at now, right? The moving average, the price is trading 15% above the daily 10 EMA. Historically, when I see anything over 15%, uh, generally we're due for a pause or for some sideways action or pullback to let the moving average catch up a little bit and kind of start closing that gap. Below that, the 22 EMA, but that's way down at 5,600 now, way down there. <laughs> um, and so that's the next real key level to be watching as support, but there's certainly some psychological support between here and there. 6K, now that it's broken above, will be an interesting level of support to be watching. That was a long time, uh, you know, psychological level that continued to hold. So in and around that zone, if we start to see a reaction to the downside, then, you know, this window on the way down is what I'd be watching, right? So 6K. And then by that point, the moving averages should start to catch up. So the moving average pair. And you can see that was the last time we saw pretty solid support there was during the uh, Bitfinex scare. And then it went sideways for about a week and held that 22 EMA on the daily basis. And then finally popped back above that 5,200. And from there, it was pretty much just off to the races. You did have a little bit of a pause on Binance hack. But surprisingly, the market didn't really care a whole lot about that. Uh, so that's uh, the level of support I'm using. I use indicators as well as horizontal price points. And so those are the two prices I'll be watching, 6200 6 k kind of that window there. And then, of course, the moving averages on the way down. Now, in, you know, in the event of a, like, major trend change and we start to see a correction, then at that point I'd be using uh, some key Fibonacci levels. And what I would do is I'd base it on two levels. If you wanted to go full retrace, you know, you would start from this massive swing low here in early February. That'd be kind of the full the full move. Uh, let's assume it tops here. We're not going to say it does, but let's assume it tops. Then the 382 level is usually your strongest support level, or if it's going to remain in an uptrend, it holds that level. That's what I mean to say. Um, then that's going to be at 5,600, interestingly enough. 618 is your kind of must hold level, and that's at Seven forty seven hundred way down there. Another way to do this is to start from the impulse leg, which is generally how you do the Fibonacci retracements, is the latest impulse move. And we all know that this impulse move started when prices broke out above 4200 on April 1st. And so if you do a retracement just using that time frame, your 382 level is right around 5935, which lines up with that 6K uh, support. And then the 50% retracement is basically 5,600, which also lines up with this support, interestingly enough. And then 618 takes you down to 5,200. So for me, this is the retracement analysis that I would be using if uh, if I was looking for a potential turning in the trend. Um, how low could it go? What are the targets to be looking for on the downside? Because this lines up very well with some key support and resistance levels, as well as, you know, this is the big start of the impulse leg. And so that's what I'd be watching. If it topped here, I'm not saying it's going to, but if it topped, right, do we get some support here? Do we get some support here? And then finally back into there. Those are the, the zones to be watching on the way down. So um, just, you know, something to be considering. I'm always looking at all the different, you know, variables. And that's the thing about technical analysis. Um, yes, you do use technical analysis to predict, but you use price action to react, right? So I use technical analysis to say, okay, if this, then this, if this, then that, uh, I predict maybe this, maybe that. But at the end of the day, uh, it's always price action, right? If I see a big bullish engulfing candle after a pullback, then I'm gonna base that as 
you know, price action and volume is number one. All my indicators, all that other fun stuff at the end of the day, uh, that's what they do is they indicate, but they never dictate my trading. It's generally the other way around. So price action first. But so that's the, the key levels to be watching on the Fibonacci retracement side. Now let's do something a little bit different. If we did Fibonacci extensions, I generally don't show this a whole lot on the videos, but if we did extensions, uh, there's a couple of ways um, to look at those there and to see basically, you know, how far do prices run. And one way is to start with the entire move from the 6K break down to the low and then run an extension up on that. Um, and, you know, how far up could we go from there? So if we do an extension from the low to the top, pull that back down to the starting point there. And there's a couple of key extension points that I use. I use the 272, 414, and the 618. Yes, you can use a double, but that's generally not how I do it. Um, so what I'll do is if we did an extension using this, I'm going to zoom in here just so we can, so you guys can see that on the screen because I'm sure that's pretty hard to read. Uh, you can see here we've had the 100% move. And then the next target is coming in view using the extensions. That's basically at 71.65. Then the 414 puts you at 80 or 76.15. And then 618 at 82.63. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, if we get there. Now, generally, um, I'm a little bit more conservative. And so I scale out, you know, at the 272 and the 414. 618 is kind of like, you know, it just depends on the chart and the pattern you're trading and all that. And if it's bullish enough maybe you hold for a swing into that but um most likely you'd see a pullback first from from this so those are the levels to be watching on the way up so 7160 7615 we'll see if that uh plays out in any material way here but kind of some things to be watching here um if that's all new to you guys and you're kind of wondering what the heck is he talking about i apologize um, there's uh, certainly a lot of videos on, on YouTube. You can learn about that stuff. I have some videos that I have put together to explain that. So certainly uh, there's good material out there for all of us to continue learning. So let's move on to the alts because, hey, that's where the fun's going to be next, I think. Um, of course, it all depends if uh, Bitcoin just collapses and then kills the party. Remember in October, November of 2017, it was like the Bitcoin show and it was really the only place to be. And then in the summer of 20. Uh, you know, 2018, it was like Bitcoin rallied, the alts rally, Bitcoin drops. Oh, no, it was Bitcoin rallied, the alts dropped, Bitcoins dropped, the alts dropped. <laughs> and there was just no reprieve until um, the alts like finally had a, their own show here. But looking at um, some of the correlation here, the BTC dominance peaked out around 59% yesterday, just shy of 59% before pulling in here. But you can see the story has been Bitcoin is the place to be since April. We did have a nice alt rally February through April. Many of the small cap, mid cap names were really the place to be. Bitcoin Cash, Binance were probably the two big cap names that were outperforming, of course, Litecoin. Uh, but a lot of the fun was in the small names, right? Engine and, you know, Bat and just a whole bunch of those smaller names. Um, but since April, it's just been the Bitcoin show going all the way up. And you can see this on the charts here with the others category really taking a hit. Most of the alts, I mean, the charts were just brutal this week, looking at them going into the week. But when I start to see that parabolic drop, uh, I start paying attention and saying, hey, it's time. It's time to start buying some of the blood. Um, I did some front running. Generally, I'll wait for the reversal. But when it's just going that parabolic, um, I do some front running and, and hold on for a few days and let things play out. And generally, usually it, it works out. Uh, it seems to be working out today. So good stuff. Um, but... That's what I was looking at here, and we're seeing this starting to play out. Now, we get these big waves, right? You remember, like, in in the summer of 2017, um, way back in the day, for those of you that were around, right, the BTC dominance just basically rose straight into October, November with, you know, some small periods of little alt rallies along the way. But you can see ETH and so many of these other names are just either flat or down. And then, of course, there was the massive spike here at the end, and then, last year we saw some pretty big waves back and forth right so leading into uh, after the big drop in february january february right the um btc was really the place to be the alts took a big hit as bitcoin rallied and then this was the run-up into consensus last year so from april through basically mid-may it was basically alt outperforming bitcoin now both were going up 
but alts were leading the way up. And then, of course, that was the top. And then we had the big slow roll down over the summer. And it was basically Bitcoin just taking more dominance through September, October. And then after that, they were just kind of in sync, right? Bitcoin crashed, everything else crashed. And here we are just recently seeing a little bit of changing. So we'll see if we can finally get this orange line to start really dropping quick, right? If you get a move like that, then it's basically alts is the place to be. So we'll see how that goes. So let's move on without further ado. Let's move on. So looking at ETH, I'm going to start with some of the big cap names first. I will look at ETH BTC. And if there's other names you guys want to look at, by all means, let's throw those names out there. Let's uh, take a look at some of these charts. But yeah, so looking at ETH, I mean, it's been in a big downtrend versus Bitcoin uh, for quite some time, right? For several months now, it's just kind of been the underperformer. Um, and finally seeing a little bit of action. Now, this is not the first time we've seen this, right? We saw this back here a few days back. It had a nice little pop, and then it just kind of faded that move, no follow through. And then here, I started seeing this thing rolling back over again. And what I was looking at was these potential, sorry, let me go back to the daily chart, uh, these potential bullish divergences that were showing up. And so what I mean by that is you had a price make a swing low right here. And then, of course, you know, they're making new lower lows. And at the time, it was like, hey, this is making a new lower low. RSI is not confirming. MACD is not confirming. It's got a higher histogram. And so I started looking at that. And that just starts to signal that even though the chart's really starting to accelerate to the downside, the momentum is starting to wane here from the seller's perspective. And, you know, we saw this big wick, right? That's a big telltale. <laughs> no pun intended. But when you see that big wick, that big tail to the downside, and then it just fully recovers on high volume, Generally, that marks a good reversal, right? That's a good uh, signal that, hey, this could be the low. It's never 100%, but it puts the odds in your favor, right? When you start to see these bullish engulfing candles with high volume on a bullish divergence, right? I mean, for me, the stars are lining up to at least take a shot, right? There's never 100% in anything, but for me, it's telling me, okay, time to start paying attention, time to take a shot. You've got a bullish divergence. You got this big wick. You got BTC spiking, going parabolic, and it's not just a one name event, right? It's multiple names looking like this. It's ETH. It's Litecoin. It's Neo. It's EOS. It's Cardano. It's on and on and on. And so you're starting to see a macro picture being painted, where hey, maybe the alts are coming back. And so that's what I was looking at. Like I said, I was early. I was front running some ETH here a couple of days back. Now that's in the green, luckily. Um, I was looking at ETH from the USD side and had been on my radar for quite some time. I wasn't going to trade it yet because even though this was looking good, I was really more watching BTC because that was just kind of the, the place to be. But looking at ETH, right, from the dollar perspective, it had just been in this nice consolidation above this big base here. Let me move this line. Right, and it had held up pretty well. If you look at that, right, just a very nice ascending triangle breakout, pulled back, held the breakout point several times, but it wasn't outperforming Bitcoin. So it was kind of like, let's just wait until this thing outperforms Bitcoin. The best place to be is Bitcoin for now. Um, but started to bounce on the BTC side. And then, of course, today finally breaks out. I was already in because I was in back here, but that was mostly me coming in from the Bitcoin side. This is broken out now. Uh, my first target on the breakout was 200 and then 220. And so we're basically at 200 now. We've achieved that first target. And then above that, I'm looking at 220 as the next major resistance zone. That's my next target that lines up with this window back here. If it continues higher, it really gets going. Uh, then you're looking at around 250 as your next target for ETH on the way up. So uh, there's certainly some potential. You could do a measured move, you know, with this ascending triangle base. And the way you do that is just kind of take the swing low to the breakout point, extrapolate that out. And if we did that, what does that take us to? That takes you to about 207, right? So you're kind of in that window. So there's just a lot of ways to look at it. At the end of the day, I'm going to be basing it off of price action and looking at some of these support and resistance levels. And so now that we've hit 200, I'm going to see if uh, we can swing up to 220. So holding some ETH, especially from the, the BTC side, right? Let's go back to that. I'm going to go ETH Binance, right? And so what I was looking at on most of these alts, keep this in mind when we go through these charts, on most of these alts, uh, my thesis was basically this is going to be a bounce trade, right? I mean, could it turn into into this, right, where it's just like a full reversal and a big rally? It could, 
but that's not my going in plan, right? My going in plan is I'm just going to swing it up for a quick trade into resistance. Now, if it continues higher and sets up a new entry, then I'll look at that as a whole separate trade and we'll go from there. But what I'm looking at here is some of these names were just kind of, they had broken this major support here in the last couple of weeks and they were just really starting to accelerate to the downside. And so what I was looking at was even if they bounced just a little bit into that or even fully retraced just to the resistance point, many of these names were very attractive from a risk reward perspective. And so that's what I was looking at, right? So from ETH, you know, upside potential would have been 18%. There were other names that were just much bigger, right? So BAT, for example, basic attention. Um, and, I, and I posted these in the, in the Slack group here. And so what I was looking at was, you know, even if it retraces to the 382 level, right? The potential, now you don't know necessarily swing for the home run, but the potential was big, right? That was a 40% move. It ended up being a, you know, 20, 33% move at the peak, right? And very quickly, it was basically 33% in a day. And so those are the type of pops that I'm looking at, right? I'm looking for those quick spikes and then there'll likely be some pullbacks, right? Because nothing, well, not nothing. Very rarely is there a V bottom or just like comes off hard off the lows and just gets going. Sometimes it happens, but usually there's some retracements and back and forth. And so that's what I was looking at. I was looking at for those high potential names, right? That had the potential to go as high as, you know, 20, 30, 40%. Another one was engine, right? Engine was one of those where it didn't look like it on the chart, but if you look at it from a, you know, risk reward perspective, even just getting back up to the resistance here, now that's 40%. If you zoom in, right, that's a quick 40%. And of course it did, um, some of that right on the wick the wick top it went up 32 percent so quick trades there um cardano which i do have a position in so disclaimer there um, cardano breaking out put a little bit of a double bottom here in the last day um, so this was looking nice now yesterday when i did the live stream we were seeing that first green candle off the low uh, hadn't quite cleared resistance yet i was paying attention to that um, and I was looking at two things on the way down. I was thinking maybe this puts a little pause, a bull flag, and then pops through, or it fully pulls back, and then it does like a little double bottom, and then it gets going after that. But if it does that, I want to see volume come in on the double bottom. And that's exactly how this played out today. And so you see this guy move where had that pullback, had that initial spike, failed right at the moving averages. You can see that. Let me move this. Right, Failed at the moving averages, so couldn't close above the four hour, 10 EMA, started to drift lower, had a quick spike lower. And then here today, big volume comes in as it pushes through the moving averages and closes above this little bit of a resistance. Following candle confirms, and now we're getting going, volumes really start to expand. And so very nice little double bottom there. How high does it run, right? That's the next question. Um, and I'm always just gonna be looking at the next resistance level. So it's already hit that one there. Next one there is here, then above that here. And so those are the ways I'm looking at that. And with these, again, I'm using the FIB levels as kind of my retracement tools. And so let's say we start with, uh, where's the latest impulse leg here? Let me go to the daily chart. Gosh, that's basically a straight top to the bottom. So we would start with the whole leg here. So if I did that, uh, I'm gonna include the wicks at the bottom, but not the top. Then you're looking at 382 taking you way up to 1280. Right. So that'd be a good target there on the way up. And then, of course, the moving averages are usually significant. So here we are. The 10 EMA is right now acting as a little bit of resistance. Maybe hard to see in my chart there. 22 takes you right up to around 1220. 382 is just above that. So that'd be a good uh, place to look at it. If you wanted to get conservative, you would say this was really the impulse leg, right? Had the break, pause, and then you really got going. Then your 382 is 1200, which is the next target. So, you know, that's the way I'm looking at some of these moves. I'm just looking for for some bounce action off the lows into some of these resistance points. And then we'll see where they go from there. If they really start taking off, there will be several opportunities to jump on the trend, right? If something's trending, you'll get these pullbacks, you'll get pauses along the way, you'll get consolidations that then break out. Then you enter there as breakout trades. And you know, there's just so many different strategies and approaches to, to enter in some of these. But if you look at the potential, right? That's what I keep going back to. Uh, even a move up to this point, right? For me, that's a 30% move versus Bitcoin, right? So that's a nice little pop there. Um, here would take you 46% versus Bitcoin, right? 
And so the potential there is for some nice trades. And the way I look at it is this. If Bitcoin drops 10%, 20%, but some of these alts end up gaining, you know, 20%, 30%, 40% versus Bitcoin uh, before that happens, then for me, that's a good trade, right? You end up with that much more net Bitcoin uh, and then you can afford to ride the pullback in BTC uh, and just cycle back and forth instead of having to actually go into a fiat equivalent, right? And so that's that's generally the strategy that I like to take, um, especially with the market looking like it's turned the corner. It makes more sense to stay invested and hold versus when you're in a bear market, right? You you take the quick trades and then you go back into some cash or cash equivalents or even short and look to profit on the way down, right? But if things are generally trending higher, then at that point, it's like it makes more sense to try to hold on a little bit more and just find areas that are potentially going to outperform Bitcoin on the way up. And there will be plenty of those opportunities on the way up. That's just the way it works in the alt space for the crypto holders and traders. Um, so that's Cardano, my, my messy Cardano chart. Ooh, this guy here. Let's look at it from uh, the USD side here. Cardano. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so that was the other one too. So we were mentioned in the live stream yesterday. I said, you know, my strategy of front running and, and buying the knife when it looks like we're ready for a reversal may not be for everybody, right? I said, you may be a little bit more conservative or you may not want to front run it. And you might want to wait for the backside of the trade and wait for confirmation. Um, and there's two ways to enter these. Obviously, you can enter via BTC pair or you can enter during via, you know, a, a dollar equivalent. If you were sitting on some cash and dollar equivalents, then this would have been your signal, right? This break of the downtrend line. And let me zoom in here for us. It's been in this very solid downtrend. And then today popping through the day's not over yet, but clearly volume will be above average before the day is over. And so that's positive. And as long as price now for me, at least, as long as price holds above these moving averages, maybe hard to see on the screen there, but you got the 10 EMA and the 22 really starting to head higher now. As long as price closes above those on this daily candle, uh, that's the green light for me. If I wasn't in already, which I am on in Cardano at the moment, but if I wasn't in, I'd be looking at something like that as, hey, that's the signal. Maybe you get a little bit of retracement and then you get a, a go from there. And then on the way up, some targets to look at, of course, the most recent high would be a, lay, a way to look at that. You could look at some retracement levels using the FIB analysis, um, but generally I'll just use some support resistance levels. So um, right now you'd be looking at about 0.082 as your first target and then above that 0.09. And then if it breaks out above that, then you know it's kind of a new leg up and then you got to look, really look left to see you know where do we go from there, All right? So that's the way I approach those. But Cardano, good stuff. Get to see finally, finally, some of these alts coming back to life. Man, they were just getting murdered the other day. Uh, some of these alts were just, I was looking at some of them, and just they were straight down. They were going parabolic down. I mean, Bitcoin was just take, sucking all the life out of them. Uh, but it's good to see a little bit of pause and some potential action here. Let me go to Stellar. I'm going to go to Stellar on um, Binance here and show you guys this one. Uh, again, just to be clear and transparent, I do have a position in Stellar. Uh, so some of these things to be watching here. And this is what I was looking at. I mean, this guy was just crazy oversold. And I thought, you know, even if it just retraces on the daily chart to the moving average pair, even just that, right? And you're not talking about like, you know, it's going to bounce all the way back to the, the breakout point. Like even if it just bounces a little bit, I mean, that's 20 to 30% off the lows. Uh, that's not bad, right? I'll, I'll take that trade. And of course, if it gets more than that, right? If it fully bounces, first resistance level is going to be right there at around 1890. Let's, you know, that's 39%. And then above that, 50%. So we'll see. Um, not expecting that, but hey, stellar lumens. So many potential candidates out there. Let's go to the list here real quick. Um, what names are you guys liking? Let's, I'm going to go through the comments here, see what names you guys want to look at. We'll go from there. But if we go to the coin market cap here real quick, just a scan, of course. Finally, some green in the alts that's bigger than Bitcoin. Bitcoin up 8%, ETH up 12%, Bitcoin Cash 16 Litecoin 18 and on and on. Cardano 21 
It's been a nice little move off the lows here finally for some of these alts showing some life. Bat Neo. It looks like we still have a few bears out there. <laughs> a few bears that are not enjoying this party. Hey, you guys have had your turn. <laughs> uh, let me make uh, some notes here while I read your guys' comments. And then we'll get to it. I'll just do a few. Certainly won't do too many. Let me see. Bats. We'll look at that one again. Uh, Neo. Yeah, QKC. We looked at that one yesterday on the live stream. Took a look at Monero for you, man. BNB. Um, Ripple. We'll take a look at Ripple. I did pick up some Ripple, even though Ripple was like ridiculous bearish. Consensus alts, you know, sometimes they move, sometimes it's really hit or miss. And my experience has been consensus generally does very little for some of those alts. Um, a lot of times the price, if there's going to be movement, the price is already baked in before consensus. That's just generally how it's been. Um, but, you know, you don't really have a lot of history because prior to 17, right, there weren't really that many alts anyway that were at consensus. So. Um, just my thought. I mean, I think it makes sense to pay attention to the news because there could be announcements or something like that, which certainly will drive that. But by the time you get the news and all that, it'll be it'll be priced in. So, just something to watch. EOS definitely look at Litecoin. Zen, yeah, I noticed Zen kept popping up on my alerts, and I was like, man, Zen. Just going out of nowhere. Let me see what's on the watch list. Yesterday, the watch list was like tiny. Uh, let me see. E all the USD pairs on the watch list, of course. I'm going to kind of ignore those. Cardano, BTC. IOST still on the watch list here. Uh, let's see. Engine, Bitcoin Cash. Most of these are all USD pairs. Uh, USD, 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 USD. Wow. Now we'll look at another one here. If, for those of you that do get the alerts, one of the ones I'd be using, obviously, on the move is a great alert. But uh, when something is pulling back and just in this downtrend or setting up a base that potentially could break out, these power pivot alerts are really good for signaling some potential moves coming. You know, so you've got like Go Chain there, a bunch of KuCoin names are giving you power pivots. Let's see what else is showing up here. Waves. I'm not a big fan of waves. Uh, Monero, Engine, Neo, we already seen those, right? So that's how I was looking at those two. Those are some early indicators. They were all flashing the last couple days, right? These power pivots on some of these names that were potentially about to rock. Um, Walton, Icon. I'm going to put some of these on the list here. WTC, ICX. All right. Total market cap for end of year. You know, that's a tough one. I generally, I don't know. That's a tough one. Let's go to the market cap chart real quick. I mean, we crossed over 200 billion finally. It was nice. Crossing over that 200 billion. And this was interesting, right? I was pointing this out on Twitter for those of you that, uh, that follow me is while Bitcoin was just on a tear, the overall market cap was just churning, right? It wasn't actually gaining a whole lot of ground, going sideways, back and forth, back and forth. And this is because there was a little bit of a trade-off happening. The alts were just getting smacked while Bitcoin was moving higher. So it was kind of a balance effect. But now the alts are coming back to life and you're seeing the overall coin market cap really starting to take off here as Bitcoin's you know, pushing right through 7K and some of these other ones are coming back to life as well, which are adding to the overall weight which is nice. Uh, an alternative point of view was this. I've been looking at this one here, and this was the BTC excluded picture, right? And you can see my arrow here. I actually haven't looked at this today, but this is what I was pointing out was waiting for this uh, non-BTC market cap picture to break above this downtrend that it's been. 
And you're getting that today. You're finally getting that break above the trend. You're getting volume expansion coming in here as it does that. And so that's a, that's a nice little bit of confirmation showing, you know, that, um, that that's happening. Now, um, can you do TA on the overall? I, I don't personally. I know some people do and they look at the coin market cap and they look at the non-BTC. I just don't. Um, just because, I mean, to be honest with you, if you look at this coin market cap here, this non-BTC coin market cap, and you go to the coin market cap list, right? And you go ETH, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, EOS, Binance, Cardano, like just the top 10 names is going to be like 80% of this chart, right? And so if you add them all up, the, you know, the top few names just really drive this. So when ETH and Bitcoin Cash and those guys start popping, this is going to just naturally pop. Uh, that's just generally the way it works. So um, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of TA on it. You could, I just don't. I mean, the chart looks, chart looks like, just like the other ones do. All right, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna go back to the list here. See what else we got going. BTC, 7K, good stuff. All right, let's go through the list real quick. See how quickly we can get through these. I'm gonna call it a day. It's Saturday. I figured, why not do a live stream today? Haven't done a video all week, just been chilling. There really hasn't been a whole lot to do other than just talk about Bitcoin, and everyone's already doing that. So why do you guys need me to do that? <laughs> so, oh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Like, I would have been saying the same thing all week. Bitcoin's going up. Alts are going down. Just hold until the alts turn. <laughs> but uh, the alts are finally turning. All right. So looking at this, uh, bat, bat was a nice little pop off the lows here. Very strong move. Um, you know, that was one of the trade ideas that I had posted as a potential candidate for a move off the lows. Now, if we zoom in here and really look at the lower time frame, um, I think it's still in play. I think it can certainly provide some some secondary entries here. Yesterday was a good secondary entry. It did rally and it came right back to the breakout point here. This was 5,200 basically. And right now that seems to be acting as a little bit of support. Uh, there was a good quick trade to be had. This is the one hour view, by the way. So very quick trade. But you can see it pulled right back. Uh, this first green candle off the low held the moving average pair, also held the breakout point. Not a lot of volume as that happened, but you know, not bad. And certainly gave you a quick push. And uh, that's what I was looking at was the prior high as your first target. And I mean, almost went exactly to that point before really taking another dive lower. And so that was a pretty good quick trade there. If you would have been watching that guy. Uh, you would have been up anywhere between, you know, 10 to 15 percent, depending on entry and exits there. But the potential was there for a quick trade. Um, now that it's pulled back, I think it'll be a healthy consolidation, maybe set up a little bit of a symmetrical pattern here. But as long as it holds this 5200 level, I think it's one to watch. It was an early mover off the low, good volume. Um, and I think you can certainly get a secondary leg higher. Let's go to the four hour view here real quick. Uh, four hour view, you know, maybe setting up a little bit of a pause. I don't like the volume patterns here as much on the four hour view. You can see the the green bars on the way up are really being dwarfed by these three red candle bars. A lot of selling showing up. Although this was a spike lower, just kind of a washout closed up at the highs. So not bad. Ultimately on the four hour view, if it starts to clear, you know, a little bit of a tr downtrend here, it starts to really turn higher, then I'd be looking at that. I'm going to definitely keep it on my radar for another entry and then my stop loss would really be just below this support because right now the support's holding and if it continues to hold and it breaks higher that's usually how i trade those to me at that point that's kind of your logical stop and if i'm in a trade and it violates that to the downside then i'm thinking i just want to get out of the way i could be wrong and i'll just wait for a better setup right so that's what i'd be looking at if it breaks above the line i'd be looking for another push higher um and at this point, you'd expect it to take out those prior wicks. Your next resistance level is going to be uh, about 6,200. And so this would be just over 2R multiple, 13% upside for a 6% downside. For me, that's my minimum. So if I see a 2R multiple on a trade, uh, I will generally take that. Preferably 3R would be better, but that's usually the way I look at those. So hope that makes sense. That's the way I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thought process. All right. Oh, I know. I'm so I've been so lazy about it. 
I, I looked into that Brave publisher last year. Sorry, I'm eating a snack here, by the way. Sorry about the background noise. But um, yeah, I was looking at that Brave. I just haven't done it. Ooh, do BitConnect. Maybe we should do BitConnect. Next on the list, Neil. I did enter some Neo today, by the way. So let me clear my my markings, and I will walk through my thought process on Neo with you guys. And hopefully, it makes sense. Um, and, and the reason I walk through these, right, is I mean, yeah, I could just pull up a chart, highlight some support resistance levels, but you know, I, I generally am much more of an active trader, and so I always look at these in terms of like risk reward entries where would i get in where would i get out does it make sense is there a better alternative you know i look at a bunch of different things like that um so i was looking at neo here it hit the radar while it was still on the way down uh, this was one of the names that i that i highlighted to the group saying you know it's on my radar neo cardano engines bat raven those are a bunch of names that i listed um but neo was looking good and then when we did the live stream yesterday he was finally seeing that pop off the lows. I wasn't in the trade yet, but it was finally seeing the pop off the lows. And I was looking for two things. One, I was looking at, okay, this the top of this candle at the time, right, stopped right here. This is kind of now acting as a little bit of resistance. And what I was looking at was it's pulling back, didn't get above the moving averages. So what I want to see is either a close above the moving average or a little bit of a pause, maybe a bull flag, and then a rally higher. Or if it fully retraces, see if it does a little bit of a double bottom at the prior low. And so that's what we ended up seeing was a double bottom at the low. And so let me zoom in there. And it just really hit all the marks, right? So um, double bottom was setting up here. So this was my kind of my breakout point, my resistance point right there. And you saw this pull right back. Then you had the big wick. And notice it may be hard to see on the chart here, but this wick undercut the prior lows which is good generally because what that does is it shakes out any of the last holdout sellers right it kind of like takes out their stops somebody was holding out and they said all right we're finally seeing some green if it gets below this i'm gonna get out this was a nice little shakeout and then not only that immediately recovered and then was followed by a big bullish engulfing candle on well above average volume and so that's a bullish sign of a reversal when you see a double bottom a shakeout that undercuts the prior low and then quickly recovers on high volume. And notice this green candle. This green candle undid the prior five red candles. Nice bullish engulfing candle. And so big pop, undid those, gets back above the 10 EMA. Doesn't quite break out though, right? Hit the same resistance level as this prior wick. And so that was really my entry. I was saying if it starts to close above 1440, then I'm going to look to get in. Um, next candle was a pause, and then here in this candle did spike through, and so I took a position and looking at that. Now, on the way up, what I'd be looking at is what are my targets. Oh, before I move that, right? The other thing to note is this double bottom had a bullish divergence with it, right? And so is anything 100%? Of course not. Never 100%. Trading is just a game of probabilities. It's about putting the odds in your favor. But when I see this line up, experience tells me hey this has a chance it's got a good shot of seeing some more upside follow through you had the shakeout you got the bullish volume you got the bullish divergence um you know the other alts are starting to show some life right and so just a lot of the things are lining up that tells me take a shot at it right i'm not going to go 100 percent all in on neo <laughs> but this tells me versus btc it could have some outperformance mm. to the upside so that's what i'm looking at now, how high could it go? A couple of ways to do this. If you do a measured move, that's kind of the simplest way. Do a measured move on the double bottom, extrapolate that out. Then you're looking at a target of around, you know, 1540, which kind of lines up with a little bit of resistance. Next resistance above that is about 1560, right? And so that's what I'd be looking at that on the way up. Of course, you could do the Fibonacci retracements as a potential target. So if we did that, we would line that up here. And look at that. 50% takes you to that target. So that's good. 618 takes you to 1620, which lines up with its next resistance. So 
Uh, it's looking good, right? So that's what I'd be looking at. A little bit of a, a bounce into some of these targets here, right? So maybe the 50%, maybe the 618 as your first targets uh, versus Bitcoin. Now let's go take a look at NEO from the dollar side. And I'm going to probably move through the rest of the names quickly. I just wanted to explain you know, some of these these thoughts here on, on NEO um, and how I would trade these. Now versus Bitcoin, of course, on my way down, if it violates this most recent support, uh, then I'll just get out of the way, go back to BTC, right? That's you got to have some point where you just say, probably not working, get out of the way. Um, at least I do. <laughs> so, so looking at Neo Dollar, um, let me go to the daily chart. It's going to make a lot more sense on the daily. So, had that nice move earlier, right? Earlier in March, April, big pop right into early April was one of the last holdouts, right? A lot of the other names had started the top on April 1st. This one had that last little hoorah, took it to $14, and then was just straight down since then. But look at where it retraced, right back to the prior resistance levels. And you can see here, we had resistance here, we had resistance here. So basically that eight buck NEO was kind of a an area in play, right? So between $8.20, $8.80, that price point. And we had that full retracement right back to that. And here today, breaking above the moving averages, breaking above the downtrend line on above average volume and getting back over that $8 range. Currently, as I look at this, it's 990. And so good little move there. So if you're looking at it from the from the tether side, right, if you were just sitting on, on cash and not necessarily looking at trade from BTC, uh, this is a good day one candle, right? Kind of a potential reversal candle on volume. Now at this point, even if it does pull back, that'd be normal, but you don't want to see it get back under this, right? So uh, the way I look at these is my stop loss is generally the low of the impulse candle that kicked things off, right? So for me, that'd be about 875. If it starts to get below that again, then this tells me that the buyers that came in and really popped things up again are kind of losing the battle, right? So if it starts to lose 875, um, I'm going to question the strength of those buyers at this point. Now, you could get a maybe a double bottom and then go, right? But that's the potential. And keep in mind, right, the reversal trades, right? When you're when you're taking a reversal trade versus when you're buying a breakout trade like back here, uh, reversal trades are generally higher risk, lower probability, right? They're just you're not trading with the wind to your back. You're you're bouncing against the trend. Uh, there's potential sellers waiting on the way up that are just going to sell into that. So there's a lot more hurdles versus when you see something like this where it just rallies and then sits tight, builds a base, and then breaks out. The momentum here is in your favor, right? Because you're trading, in this case, you're trading with the trend, right? You're looking at higher highs and higher lows. This trading is always better just because, you know, there's just higher probability. But when what do you do when something is in a long downtrend? Um, either you wait for the broader trend to turn and then you get in much later, or you look at some of these reversal trends. Uh, and you know, generally on reversal trends, I'll I'll take smaller positions, right? Because there's counter trend trading. Um, it's just higher risk by nature. On a breakout trade, uh, I'm a little bit more aggressive, right? I don't mind taking more on that end. So just something to keep in mind. All right. Um, Let's see what else here. So that's Neo. So of course, on the way up, there's going to be several targets. Neo, uh, Neo, eleven dollars is probably the first target, and then twelve dollars, and then fourteen. Then above that, you got to really look left. Um, EOS, EOS had a nice move today. Look at that candle. My my, how quickly things turn. So looking at EOS, now keep in mind on the daily charts, all of these are just bouncing right into moving averages, right? So they haven't even started. They haven't even confirmed they're ready to turn, right? I mean, they're not even close. So, you know, no need to FOMO. There'll be time. But this is a very nice move off the low. You go to the four-hour view. Um, similar action where you had a kind of a double bottom move. I bet you this had a bullish divergence, right? This was a big, whoops, big wick here to the bottom. Big bullish engulfing candle. And... Yep, sure did have a bullish divergence. So that's nice. And now you're seeing some follow through this candle closing. If it, you know, there's about 40, 47 minutes left on this four hour candle. But if it closes up here at the green, uh, that's good confirmation follow through candle. Nice volume on that move. 
first target, of course, is going to be your resistance levels on the way up. So on this pair, I'd be looking at around basically 8,500 in and around there as my next target on the way up. And then if it really gets going, probably uh, closer to around 8,900. So somewhere in this box right here. So EOS, that's looking pretty good. From this point up, that's you know it's only another seven to ten percent, which I mean no one's going to complain about seven to ten percent, but there's some other names that are just have a higher probability or higher percentage. IOST, let me see here. Yeah, QKC. I'm gonna start moving through these quick now. QKC. We covered this one in the live stream yesterday. Basically, um, this is the level I'm watching. Right, if it if it start to get above this, what is that? Call it 360 and start to hold above that, that'll be good because that'll take out some resistance. That'll also get back above these moving average pairs. Um, but you also want to see volume come in. If it pushes higher, you want to see this kind of volume coming in, right? You don't want it to be, you know, like this kind of subpar volume. Notice the other charts we were looking at, the volume on, on the way up is is well above average, right? It's, it's dwarfing the prior days. That's what you want to see on a breakout move from the lows because then that just kind of confirms, okay, there's some buyers really stepping in here, right? So that's uh, just puts the odds in your favor. So QKC 360, I'd be looking at that level first. All right, Monero. I'm just gonna go randomly through the list I have jotted down. Nice little double bottom on Monero four hour charts. Looking like it's uh, finding a little bit of a low here. You got this guy here, this guy here, some good volume coming in here. Finally clearing some resistance on this latest candle. So that is nice. Um, next target up I'd be looking at on Monero is going to be in and around this range here. So it's getting close. Call it close to 1400 um, I really like Monero from the dollar pair. So we'll go over that one next. That's really the chart I've been using as my guide. But from the BTC side, definitely looking good. And then you've got... Uh, uh, you know, pretty good resistance here at this point. If it can get above this level, things could really kick off because that was a, a pretty good wall for several days, about a week. Let's see if it can get above that. Looking at Monero uh, dollar was really the, the chart I was watching here. I'll go to Bitfinex on that guy. Um, I'm going to go to the daily chart. This is what I was really liking on Monero, right? Monero dollar had been setting up this base for a long time, right? Basically since April 1st when many of these names topped. Um, and just been consolidating below that $71, $72. It'll vary on the exchange, but basically it's that $71 to $72 range. Uh, this is what I was looking for, a breakout above $71, $72. You're seeing it. I would like to see a lot more volume on the breakout, but it's looking pretty good. And the fact that you know the BTC side is showing a little bit of a double bottom, it's helping to confirm. And so that's looking pretty good. So I'm liking that. Next target up on Monero for me has been around $85 to $86. Then above that, $90 if you're trading it from this pair. And so that's what I'd be looking at on Monero. Um, this was nice. Nice little breakout there. Let me see. I'll skip uh, b and B. I'm going to try to move fast here. I'll skip Zen. Um, Ripple. Oh, I'm sorry, not Ripple, XRP. All right, so looking at this guy here, um, man, and let, let's be let's be real here. What a crap show this has been for forever, <laughs> for all of 2019, right? And so, uh, and I've been <laughs> I've been uh, very open about that. Every time we do a live stream, I, we look at Rip XRP just because it's popular, and I'm just like. Just not good, not good, not good. I think I've been saying that all the way down, uh, and it just finally went kind of climactic. Now look at where it landed, which is interesting. Uh, right at these, you know, late 2018 support levels. This is August. This is September. Just fully retraced that. Holy smokes! Um, but it is finding a little bit of life down here, way down here. There's a tiny green candle. You got to really zoom in to see it. Let's go look at it. <laughs> Um, and full disclosure, I, I picked up some XRP this week, so we'll see. I'm trying to benefit on this guy here. Um, but looking at XRP, and I'll go from the dollar pair, because the dollar pair is breaking out, but I didn't really care much about the dollar pair while the BTC pair looks so so ugly. 
Um, but on this guy, you know, I was just looking at the same thing, like some of these other ones. I mean, where's my measure tool? You know, how high off the lows could it bounce? Even to the 10 EMA is, you know, 17%. To the 22 EMA, which would also line up with some prior resistance, you know, that's 25% versus Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, there's some potential there. But dang, dang, this has been a rough one. Now, looking in, let's zoom in here. Um, the volume is finally coming in here pretty good. Let me clear this support line that I've got drawn. And so what I want to see on XRP is a close above this 4,800 level. If it starts to really close above that, 4,840 really, um, that'd be good. That really starts to signal that this buying volume you're seeing is going to show a little bit more follow through. And again, like some of the others, you know, you had this new spike low that took place here. And of course, there was a bullish divergence on that spike low. And so, you know, there's some good signs there that, hey, maybe that was the low. And you're going to start to see some upward movement now. We'll see. Now, if it violates that low, generally, I'd be out of the way. That's just me, especially considering that was a long time support. And so if it breaks below that, look out below. So that's what I'd be watching on on XRP. And again, for me, just because this chart is like so ugly, uh, it'd be more of a quick bounce trade. And so what I'd be looking at is this prior level back here to this prior resistance here is kind of the window, like my best case, right? If I was thinking this really got going, I'd be looking at that as potential kind of upside bounce. And even from current levels, I mean, that's, that's a good 25%, right? Not too bad versus Bitcoin. Now let's go look at it from the dollar pair. So if you look at XRP USD, I'll go to Binance and use Tether. Yikes. Taking my notes off. Um, and again, this has just been this long time support level right around that 28 cent mark. And so that's a must hold, right? XRP, 28 cents. If it breaks below that, it's just not going to be pretty. And it's just range bound right now. It's just choppy range bound. And so I'll likely be using this as a guide, um, even though I enter it from the BTC side. If this uh, dollar pair starts to run up here and then just starts to stall out, uh, it may be time to kind of take off some on the BTC side. And then if it breaks out, then that's a different trade for me. That's a breakout trade at that point. So we'll go from there. So for the bulls, for the XRP bulls, the holders, uh, getting above 37, 38 cents would be very good. Finally breaking out of this range that it's been in basically since December. So not a whole lot to do other than that. All right. Litecoin coming off the lows here today with some bullish action here. Definitely want to keep an eye on because of the happening, and that's just going to continue to be a catalyst for this whole thing going up. Um, you've got a nice little trend line that's being established here. So for me on the downside, that's what I'd be watching. If it starts to lose that trend line, then it's probably a good sign that it's over for now, but that's going to be a good support line to be watching on the way up. First target on the way up, of course, is the prior highs, which is basically right at right now. You know, 95, 96 bucks. And then, of course, you know, triple digits from there. Uh, first big resistance level on the way up is going to be around 112 bucks, 110, 112. And this is on Coinbase. And so that's what I'd be watching here on Litecoin. You got a little bit more to go from here to there. What is that? 25%. So maybe that's a little bit more than a little bit, but 25% on the USD pair. That looks really good. Uh, let's look at it from BTC side. BTC side, not quite breaking the downtrend yet, but still looking pretty good, like many of these other names. Seeing some good volume coming in. Let me clear my box there. Hasn't confirmed by getting above the moving averages or getting above any some you know significant resistance, but uh, getting above this guy right here would be good because this was a, you know, Litecoin had just such a good run. Um, it really outperformed most of the alts for a while there. And once it broke below this resistance or support, that's just kind of been the wall on the way back up versus Bitcoin. So that's 0.014. Uh, above 0.014 really looks positive for Litecoin. So if it can get above that, that'd be good. USD side looks great, though. I'm going to do two more. And then we're going to call it a day. Let me see here. 
I looked at QKC. We looked at man. Nah, nah. Let me see here on my list if there's anything that I think we watched. We already looked at this. There wasn't a whole lot we haven't seen already. We looked at Neo Aeon. We'll take a look at that guy. We looked at Engine Ontology. What? Bitcoin Cash. All right, maybe more than two. We'll look at a few. Let's go Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash. So, again, I've already had this marked up. A level that I'm watching here on the way up was this breakdown point. You can see it bounced right into that. That was your resistance on the way down. Nice little volume spike coming in today. So that's positive if you're looking to go long. Uh, but you've got a, a resistance level that's going to be need to be cleared here for things to really get going. If it can clear that, this will be a nice level bottom confirmation. This will be a break of the downtrend. Uh, it'll change the, the trend of lower lows and lower highs. And so maybe you get a little bit of outperformance on BCH here. So that's the level to be watching. Uh, 0.052 really. Closing above that looks good. Uh, BCH USD. It's going to be a little bit more bullish, of course, because of the price action in Bitcoin. Uh, but this one's breaking out here today. Breaking above 320. So that looks good. Next target up for me was basically 350 and then 400s. Uh, that's the way I was playing that back here when when I was looking at it when it had that initial run. Those are my next targets on the way up. Nothing's really changed there. So 360 and then 400. 400 significant because on the Coinbase exchange, this closes the gap that we had when they had the whole freeze when you know Bitcoin Cash, SV, all that fun stuff was going on. Uh, this would close that gap. After that. You know, it's kind of anyone's guess. Does it keep going? Does it go to 500? Uh, who knows? So those are my next targets on BCH. Ontology. Ontology. Oh, oh my goodness, that's ugly. Let me uh, clear some of these old lines here. You know, and again, this would be more of a reversal, just like we're seeing on NEO. You got to really zoom in here. Uh, and again, shorter time frame. So you got the four hour view, you got this spike higher, breaks above resistance. I mean, almost identical chart, right, as NEO. And then, of course, on the way up, some fib retracements and resistance levels as your targets. I'd really be looking at this level as my target. So about 1900 on the BTC pair. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, ICX was good. ICX USD was good. So I was watching this one here, just long time support finally gave way uh, at the end of April. And that was basically around that 35 cent mark and just has struggled to get back above, really started to roll over. If it can start to close back above it again, uh, then this would be very positive for ICX. So what I'd like to see ICX do, this is from the USD side, is you know maybe pop through, pull back and start to hold and then get going, right? Uh, you're going to have a lot of targets on the way up. You're going to have, you know, 41 cent is your resistance first. And then above that, you know, obviously the prior swing high around 45 cents. And then over that, let's go to the daily chart. Um, then you've got this, you know, like many of these names that broke down in November and all that, basically that same level. So 54 cents to 60 cents is kind of the the best target right now, right? Over that, then you're, you know, it's just holding another ball game, but. That's what I'm watching now. ICX is one of the early movers in February, but then it just really stalled out. And some of these other names just really took off and outperformed. And so we'll see. Uh, you could definitely argue for a head and shoulders here. This is not, you know, not exactly the most bullish chart. I don't know if you guys can see that here, but you can argue for head and shoulders there. Walton. Yikes. Uh, Zcash. A little bit of a wick reversal there. Some good volume coming in at least. Zcash BTC. If it can start to hold above 9,200, that's uh, that's be the level I'm watching on Zcash BTC. That would get it above the moving averages and all that good stuff. So that's kind of the first signal. But volume's coming in. We'll see if it's if it's more than just a quick flash in the pan, which, you know, 
let's be honest, right? We've seen these moves in the alts before, and they've been very short-lived on the way down, right? You get these little spikes that last maybe a couple days and then just keeps rolling over. So you definitely got to keep that in mind. And that's what I that's what I was saying earlier is when you're, you're counter-trend trading, when you're going against the green, um, you know, this is lower probability until it finally turns the corner and starts making higher highs and higher lows. At that point, you, know, you kind of got the wind to your back. But until then, I just take it a little bit more cautiously. Oh, let me see. What was the other one I was going to look at? That was another one. Oh, Aeon. Ooh, do do. All right. So looking at this guy here. This is, again, this is just coming off the automated watch list. So I'm just kind of scrolling through those to see what's popping. See what's happening. And if you're not familiar with how that works, uh, obviously you got to subscribe, but there's videos here. If you're a subscriber, there's resources, tutorials, alerts, tutorials. Uh, and it talks about this, you know, Node Insider's watch list, the top BMI watch list. This is an automated watch list. It just refreshes several times a day. Um, it's not a handpicked thing, but I do use it when I, uh, you know, I, I cherry pick some names when I put my my uh, analysis together and I list things to watch and some setups and all that. So uh, it's definitely very helpful. Um, so this one has already run up to the target. It may be hard to see there, but there's a big wick that's spiked right into that target. It's pulling back. It's still looking good. There's not really any sell signals yet. Uh, I did hit that first target, but getting above 311 would be pretty good here. Call it 312. Closing above that would really start to signal a potential turning of the corner here. On the daily chart, that's going to look a lot better. Let's go look at the daily chart. Yeah, so you see on the daily chart again, that will start to really help turn this picture. Right now, it's just a bounce off the lows, but it's a nice little bounce. Um, let me see here. I'm reading your comments. Yeah, you know, so I had a pretty good uh, discussion with somebody. They were talking about, like, you know, sitting on the sidelines with some cash. Do I buy here? What do I do? Do I just, you know, do I go all in? What are your thoughts around, you know, where is Bitcoin going to be in a year, two years? Um, and obviously, it's anyone's guess. Now, my guess is Bitcoin will be higher in a year or two years, right? How much higher? Who knows? It could be catalyst. It could be all kinds of things. Uh, 10K, 20K. Who knows, right? Maybe more, maybe 50. I don't know. But the suggestion I was making was, um, you know, you don't have to be an expert in timing and all that. If you're a long-term believer and you think, yeah, in one year, two years, whatever, it's going to be much higher, um, then my approach is always just kind of dollar cost average in when prices are really getting hammered um, and look for those dips to buy in, right? I mean, that's that's the easiest way to do it if you are you don't care to look at the charts and time it and do all that stuff. You just kind of um, take the, the same approach that long-term investors take when they're investing in mutual funds or stocks or indexes, right? You just kind of set, a, set an amount aside that you think, Okay, every month or every week or whatever your cadence is, this is how much dollar-wise I'm going to buy. If that's $100, $500, $1,000, whatever it is, then you don't really care price at that point because you're just kind of like accumulating at some average price because you're just spreading in the buys out over time. Now, my personal approach is I try to use my technical analysis skills to time it a little bit better. Um, and when I think prices are just kind of really hammered or getting hit hard, um, I go aggressive and I, I buy a lot more. And when I'm uncertain, I don't do anything, right? Um, and so that was kind of like the case, like in 2018, you know, during this whole summer part back here, and especially when prices were getting really tight back in October, November, um, I mean, it was almost like the broken record, right? Like I was talking to people and they're like, what are you buying here? What are you doing? What are you doing? And I was still holding something that I had picked up, but I said, I'm not buying anything new here because 
Uh, I'm not smart enough to know which way it's going to go. It could break out either way. And in fact, odds favor it breaks out lower because it's a descending triangle, right? So um, I wasn't going to do anything here. Now, of course, it obviously broke down lower. And when it started to really, the blood was in the streets and people were throwing in the towel. Um, you know, I was making buys here. And that was the first time I had started making buys again in like at least eight months, if not longer. It was, it was the first time in a long time that I started accumulating some more. But at that point, I was okay with going a little heavier because I thought, okay, we've already seen the break. Maybe it does get to 2000. Maybe it does get to 1200. But at this point, I'm like, I'm looking six months, a year, two years out. I don't care right now. I wish it would have stayed a little bit lower, longer, <laughs> lower, longer, to be honest with you, but it's okay. Um, but, you know, that's just one approach, right? There's a, a lot of ways to do it. The easiest way for sure is just a dollar cost average and not care. And you can do the same thing with the alts, right? You can say, all right, I'm going to dollar cost average some amount every month and it's going to be split up this way, right? 50% BTC, 50% alts or something and then pick your alts, right? I mean, there's another way to do it. There's just so many ways to do it. Depends on your, your goals, depends on your horizon, your targets. Uh, some folks are just like, I will never sell HODL for life. And maybe they're going to be the right ones when BTC is at a million. And then even then they won't sell. <laughs> so who knows? All right. Um, any other questions here? Let me see here. I'm going to probably be done with the charts here. I'm just kind of scrolling through some questions. See what else we got going on here. Haven't really looked at the news today, so I'm not sure what, what's going on in the crypto news. After this, I'm going to probably take the rest of the day off, the rest of the weekend off. Enjoy some nice outdoor weather here. Maybe catch a movie. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, remember that when the Bitcoin cash flipping was happening? Holy smokes. That was fun. Cool. All right, guys. Um, so in the sh in the video notes, there's some links. If you're interested in some of the stuff I was talking about here, some of the trading, the alert system, and yesterday's live stream is linked in there. If you want to learn more about the details behind, like, different reversal trading strategies, um, I covered it briefly in the in the stream yesterday with the group, so definitely check that out. Um, I'm thinking I'm oh I didn't cover Tron. I saw a request for Tron. I'll cover that guy there. Um, so looking at Tron and again, this was been similar to XRP where it's just kind of been in free fall mode, but seeing a little bit of a life here showing up. Um, I was actually liking Tron a little bit more from the USD tether side. It was trying to set up, but it, kind of just rolled over um, and so like so many of these names very similar pattern get this low here a spike a new lower low bullish divergence this starts to get above that right that's kind of a nice little early signal and so like so many of these names that's really the approach i mean they're just so similar there's just so much correlation that's why uh, the usd side you know this was kind of the way i was looking at it is uh you know you got a couple levels of resistance to watch here 20, you know, 0.0255, 0.0251 is really that first level. It's breaking above that here today. Nice little bit of a rounding base kind of forming. So we'll see. Um, and it also held support. All right. Let me clear this. You can see here, long time support. So maybe that's the low. We'll see. Just very choppy. BTC USD. Oh, I'm seeing some red. Oh, no, it's the end of the world. Everybody sucks. All right. I think that's it, guys. Let me see. I'm just kind of quickly cycling through some of these. Thanks for being here. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the support. As always, appreciate you guys. Many of you have been with me for quite some time, long-time supporters, long-time viewers of the channel. Man, you know what? I'm going on, uh, what is this? April was when uh, when I started the channel back in the day so this will be a two-year anniversary two-year anniversary was in april all right you know there's a nice little pullback entry potentially on wan chain this is the one hour view this breakout over this 
a uh, nice little pullback right to the moving averages. Generally, when I'm buying the pullback entries, that's what I like to see. Um, I like to see them hold the breakout point, hold the moving averages, never violate the low of, of this candle here that caused that impulse. And then once they get going higher, then I like to uh, then look, look for another leg up on that. So when? Not too shabby. Cool. All right, guys. Hey, well, thanks for being here. I hope you have a good rest of your day, good rest of your weekend, and we'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone.